This is an ash tree. It's one of millions in Wisconsin's yards, parks, and forests. But we stand a chance of losing them all to a tiny insect that arrived here accidentally in the early 1990s. It's this little beetle, the emerald ash borer, or EAB for short, and it only attacks and kills ash trees. All other trees, including one called the mountain ash, which is not a real ash, are safe from this invasive pest. Here's how you can tell ash trees from other common trees. All native ash trees and the various landscape varieties you might have in your yard have three traits in common. Opposite branching, compound leaves, each of which has five to 11 leaflets. Opposite branching means that the twigs and leaves of the tree are attached directly across from each other. Only a few other tree species are like this. If your tree does not have opposite branching, but instead has twigs and leaves branched in an alternating or staggered pattern, it is not an ash tree. Oak, birch, and elm are common examples of alternately branched trees. Next, take a look at the leaves. All true ash trees have compound leaves. That means that on each leaf stem, there are separate leaflets. True native ash trees, depending on which kind, have five to 11 leaflets. In comparison, oak, elm, and maple all have simple leaves, like this. Two common trees that are often confused with ash are the box elder and the mountain ash. Despite the name, the mountain ash is actually a member of the rose family. You can tell a mountain ash because of its bright orange berries in late summer and fall, and its white flowers in the spring. Also, the mountain ash has alternating branches, unlike the ash's opposite branching pattern. The other tree often mistaken for ash is the box elder. It shares a few traits with ash, and sometimes it can be tricky to tell the difference. The box elder has oppositely branched twigs and leaves. It also has compound leaves. But the box elder leaf is typically made up of only three leaflets, and they are lobed, sort of like a maple leaf, not smooth-edged like the ash leaflet. Tree identification can be difficult, but these few simple facts should help you determine whether you're looking at an ash tree or something else. Concerns about trees other than ash should be raised with a private arborist or other tree care professional. When in doubt, a good photograph of the tree, including close-up pictures of the leaves and branches, can help experts determine if it's an ash. You can send those pictures to program staff through our EAB website at emeraldashbor.wi.gov or call us toll free at 1-800-462-2803 and we'll help you determine if you have an ash tree. This tiny green beetle is putting more than 700 million ash trees at risk in Wisconsin. It's the emerald ash borer, or EAB for short. Knowing how to identify this small destructive insect is just one of the ways you can help protect your ash trees. Adult beetles can be found from late May through August, spending most of the time on or near ash trees. As the name implies, its most striking feature is its brilliant metallic emerald green color. There are no stripes, dots, or other markings. Its slender bullet-shaped body is just a little bigger than a cooked grain of rice, roughly one half inch long and about an eighth of an inch wide. But there are lots of other beetles in Wisconsin that are also small and shiny and green, and they can easily be mistaken for EAB. Two of the most common are the green tiger beetle and the Japanese beetle. Like the emerald ash borer, the tiger beetle is also small, shiny, and green, but it also has six small white dots along the edge of its backside. 
and its body has two distinct parts, unlike the narrow bullet shape of the emerald ash borer. The tiger beetle is common throughout Wisconsin, often seen in sunny areas, whether there are ash trees around or not. The Japanese beetle is the other one that's sometimes mistaken for EAB. This one is commonly found on rose bushes or other backyard plants. Its body is more round than bullet-like, and its color is more coppery than emerald green. Because there are so many insects that could be mistaken for EAB, the best way to identify what you have seen is to catch one, send it in, or take a picture and email the photo to an expert. To find out where to send an insect sample or photograph, or just to get more information about the emerald ash borer, go to our EAB website at emeraldashborer.wi.gov or call the toll-free number at 1-800-462-2803. Ash trees, like this one, are under attack in Wisconsin. The villain is the emerald ash borer, or EAB for short. When this beetle infests an ash tree, the tree usually responds in a predictable way, exhibiting just a handful of symptoms. The beetle itself leaves behind specific signs that it was there. However, some of these signs and symptoms can be caused by other problems, such as disease, drought, or even physical damage to the tree. Knowing what to look for may help you protect your ash trees from this pest. Since EAB only attacks ash, if you see any of these signs or symptoms on some other kind of tree, the problem is not EAB and you should contact a private tree care company or other professional for advice. Ready? Let's take a look at some of these signs and symptoms. EAB typically kills an ash tree from the top down. As a result, you may notice that fewer leaves are coming out at the top of the tree or the canopy year by year. This thinning or crown dieback is gradual, sometimes taking three to five years. And it's not the same as when leaves just fall off the tree in the spring or summer. That's usually because of some disease or a late frost. This is a very general symptom of a tree in poor health and not always an indicator of EAB. Another symptom that often occurs when the top of the tree is dying is the growth of suckers near the bottom of the tree. This is the tree's way of trying to compensate for the loss of leaves in the canopy. These suckers can grow out of the ground near the base of the tree or even right up the trunk, and they're usually smaller than normal branches. Suckering is a general symptom of a tree in distress, but not necessarily because of EAB. Here's another symptom, vertical bark splitting. This happens when the tissue that's holding the bark to the tree is destroyed. When the tissue is gone, there's not much left behind to hold the bark to the tree, and it splits open. In the case of EAB, the beetle larvae are eating that connective tissue and slowly killing the tree in the process. Sometimes the bark splitting reveals evidence of the beetle's feeding. The last symptom we look for is evidence of woodpeckers feeding at the ash tree. Woodpeckers are often quick to find insect larvae underneath tree bark. In the winter, the damaged areas where the birds have been feeding are clearly visible. These aren't the typical jagged looking holes you might associate with woodpecker feeding. It's more like scraping off the bark on the tree to get to the EAB larvae that are just beneath the surface. On their own, each of these four symptoms is not specific to emerald ash borer infestation. But when the same tree has at least three symptoms at the same time, it may indicate that EAB is present. 
Even then, scientists still need to look a little closer for the real signs of EAB. One of these signs is the feeding tunnel created by the EAB larva when it's eating away at the tree. The tunnel starts off small and narrow, then gets a little bigger near the end. The larva winds back and forth as it feeds, leaving behind an S-shaped tunnel just beneath the layer of bark. The other EAB sign is the exit hole. In the early summer, the adult beetle chews its way out of the tree, leaving behind a small hole. The hole is about one eighth of an inch wide and is shaped just like the capital letter D. This D-shaped exit hole can be in any direction. If these two signs are both seen on an ash tree, it's likely that emerald ash borer is present and it wouldn't take very long before a larva or adult beetle was found in or on the tree. Other native insects also leave behind holes and make tunnels underneath the bark when they feed. Sometimes those holes and tunnels can be very similar to the ones made by EAB. When you see an ash tree that looks unhealthy, don't immediately assume that EAB is the cause. Make a note of what you're seeing and call the hotline to report it. Better yet, send in photographs of the tree and suspicious symptoms or signs. Many times problems can be identified using a few well-taken photos. You can get more information about EAB or learn how to submit photos at our Wisconsin EAB program website at emeraldashbor.wi.gov or by calling toll-free 1-800-462-2803.